What is up all you beautiful campers out there? Let's talk about portable power stations. I got a bunch of them right here. I'm gonna help you pick out what one is right for your setup. These are all use case specific and it depends how many people are going out on a camping trip with you. I'm gonna start with the smallest one first and this is also the cheapest and work my way up to the most expensive. Now you can sub different brands in for these. These are just the ones I have sitting around and we can talk about them. So let's go ahead and hop into this video and I'll go ahead and describe what power station you should be using in your setup. Starting off here is a Jackery 290. Now you can use this as an example for any power station that's under 300 watt hours. So for this example, this is a Jackery 290 and I bought it from Harbor Freight for about $230 on sale. Pretty good deal. But you can use a power station like this if you're camping for one to two people and it'll be able to power your phones for about a weekend. Now you're not going to be using this to power laptops. It'll die pretty quick. It is only 290 watt hours and most laptops take about 60 to 100 watts. So you're only gonna be able to run a laptop to from two to three hours. So if you're gonna to try to do work off this, probably not the best thing to use for an eight hour shift of working remote. Also, you can only run up to 200 watts out of this AC port right here, and there is only one of them. So you're limited in that factor as well. And it has two USB ports and that's about it. It also charges pretty slow. So for the value, it'll work good if you just need a little bit of power to keep your phone charged and to charge up flashlights and stuff like that. But you're not gonna be able to push a lot of power out of the Jackery 290 and be able to power multiple people for a whole weekend. So definitely okay if it's just you and it's fairly compact, so that's nice. So the Jackery 290 lives in my setup because I use it to run my diesel heater in the winter time. It's nice because this is a cheaper unit, so if I break it, Due to getting wet or something like that. I don't feel too bad about it and it's really reliable. I've had no issues with it and when I'm out camping in negative temperatures I need something reliable to make sure that diesel heater will stay running all night long. This has been a solid option for me in that use case but kind of an odd specific use case so we'll move on to the next unit. Up next here is the Blue Eddy EB3A. Another budget option for you guys looking for a budget power solution in your camping setup. Now this one is a little bit bigger than the Jackery 290. It has 268 watt hours of power, so about the same watt hours as the Jackery, but it does have more features packed into it. So you can actually input more power so you can charge this up much quicker than the Jackery. The Jackery charges at five hours. I believe last time I charged this, this charged up to, a, I think it took me about an hour to charge. So a lot faster charging, a lot faster solar charging as well, and you get another DC port here. So the reason why I have this and the Jackery, since they're kind of both like the same unit more or less, this one does have a little bit more features, but the reason why I have the Jackery as well is because this one let me down in my camping setup. It can't run my diesel heater, and the reason why I bought a cheap one is because if it broke, I didn't want to feel bad about it. But this DC port here actually is not strong enough to run my diesel heater, so that was the main use for this, and it can't do that. It can run my laptop for a little while, about two and a half hours, it's got two AC ports here and it can push up to 600 watts of power, but because it only has 260 watt hours, it can't really push that power for much longer than about 20 minutes. So not really useful there, but it has USB ports here and a USB-C port at 100 watts, so it will power a lot of phones. And up top here, it does have a, what are these chargers called? Um, man, why can't I think of the charger name? Uh, a wireless charger, yeah. So it has a wireless charger up here too. So it has a lot of features in it, which is nice, and a flashlight built into it. But for me, it's a little bit bigger and it has about the same capacity as a Jackery. So I really don't take this out camping with me anymore. So I don't really recommend this one. It does the same thing as the Jackery does for a little bit more expensive. The only benefit is you get another AC port, some more ports for USB, and it charges a little bit quicker, but it is more expensive and it's bulkier. So you're only gonna be able to power a couple phones for a weekend with both of them. And this one takes up more room. It's more expensive last time I checked. So don't really recommend this one, but if you're looking for all those cool features and you don't care about how much power you can push out through that DC port, this is a pretty okay unit and you can't go wrong with it if you're just looking for power on the weekend on a budget. Up next is the Anchor Solex. These are starting to get a little bit heavy, so I'm probably not gonna hold this the entire time. I'm actually gonna set it down right now. This is the Anchor Solex C800, running out of space here. But this guy is feature packed, which is awesome to see. So I just did a camping video using this a couple weeks ago. You can check that video up up here it was a winter camping trip but i will say this dc port up here is not strong enough to power my diesel heater so that does suck if it did power my diesel heater this would be a pretty awesome all-in-one power station so this is 
obviously more expensive as we move our way up and get into these bigger units here. This guy packs a lot of features though. You got two USB-C ports. One of them can pack 100 watts, which is awesome. Then you got another set of USB ports. Then you have the light up front right here. Awesome setup. And then look at all these AC ports. You can power a ton of stuff with this up to 1200 watts and it will actually peak for a little while and hold 1600 watts. You can really hammer some power out of this unit. I use it to run a coffee pot and a toaster and anything that produces heat like that in an electric form uses a ton of power. And this was able to hold up with it very well. This is 768 watt hours. So more than double what we've talked about up to this point. So with that much power, you're able to have a whole family running off of this for a weekend. I'd say four or five people charging phones, charging flashlights, you name it. And you'll be able to also charge up laptops and stuff off of it as well to be able to get some work done on the weekend. Now I did do a test and I was able to run my whole home office with this for four and a half hours. So that was two laptops, a monitor and lights. So that's pretty sweet. I leave this in my office actually. We just had a power outage not that long ago and I used it to make sure I was able to do my work throughout my shift. Now, depending what laptop you have, you could do a full shift about eight hours probably if you have like a high efficiency laptop. But if you're running a gaming laptop, you're not gonna be able to run it that long. I think this is probably one of the best all around units for going out and camping because it has a lot of features packed into it that we haven't even talked about yet. Up in here are two flashlights that charge off the box. So anytime you need a flashlight, you can grab it like that. This was one of my favorite features when I did a review on this in my other video. Two flashlights and it comes with a flashlight mount here that extends so you can screw that into this hole right here and aim a flashlight anywhere around your campsite to be able to see what you're doing when you're camping and cooking at night. Big fan of that. It's just really feature packed and I think this might be a good all-in-one unit for anyone who has a family or is doing long adventures and needs all these AC ports and the power. 10 out of 10. I haven't had any issues with this. I do wish a couple things changed about this one. That DC port was a little bit different there and I wish they had a cover for this. They don't mention what waterproof level this is, at least in the documentation I had. So I would like to know it was a little bit more waterproof since it is aimed towards campers. But all around, pretty good unit and I like it. So up to about 760 watt hours, I would say is good for a family of four for a weekend. You can run a fridge off this like I have in my truck. My fridge uses about 40 watts. So if you do the math, 40 divided by 760, let me pull out my calculator because I am a bit slow. Give me one second. So 768 divided by 40. So it would be able to run my fridge for just under 19 hours in my truck probably longer because the fridge only runs at 40 watts when the compressor kicks on and it doesn't kick on all the time. A little backstory of why I'm talking about a fridge and camping is because I built the truck here behind me to live out of full time. And when living out of the truck full time, you're gonna need a fridge. This was our house for seven months. We did a ton of adventures. You can check them out on the channel if you're interested in that. On to the very big boy here. Let's hop into this guy. This is a this is actually a very sensitive topic for me, this big boy right here. I don't even know if I can lift it up. Give me a second. It's heavy. Okay. So this is the Bouge RV Fort. I think 1500 is the name of this guy. I don't know. It's been a while. But this is a very heavy power station. It is feature packed and it is uh, got a lot of power involved with it. But it is also, um, I have a love-hate relationship with this guy right here. So I'm going to set this down and we'll talk about it. A little bit more before I hop into the bouge RV I do want to let you guys know that these two right here companies sent these out to me I did not spend my own money on these but I'm not out here trying to sell you anything I'm just giving you my honest opinion about this stuff and on this side I bought these two with my own money and that one up there we'll talk about but it's mostly my own money as well so I'm still doing a partial review but I do wanted to give you guys a heads up these were sent to me for free of cost so just letting you know, being honest. That being said, even though this guy was sent to me free of cost, I actually hate this. No hate to Bouge RV. They're a great company and they tried their best with this. But I did a whole review on this and a whole video and I actually had to take the video down because it wasn't performing as well as I wanted it to. And it was acting a little bit weird. And I'll talk to you guys about that. But it was acting weird and it didn't do what I wanted to do and I was talking to them and I would have felt so bad if somebody watched my review video 
and went out and bought this unit because in the review video, I actually didn't have any issues with it at that time. Then it started giving me issues a day or two after I posted the review video and I got nervous that people would look at it because this is very expensive at the time. I think it's $1,400 and I would feel terrible if somebody bought something off my recommendation and it was crappy. So backstory aside there, this thing works really good for what it is. It's high capacity and it will pump a lot of power out of it. It can run up to I think 1200, 1600 watts and it has 14 or 13, 13, let me, let me look real quick. I don't even remember. I think it's close to 1300 watt hours. So about double the Anchor Solex. So as we see, we're just doubling our power capacity. This thing is pretty awesome. I used it the whole time I was living out of the truck and I was able to run my laptops, my gaming laptops for five hours. Pretty awesome setup. I was able to run my work laptops for 16 hours because they're less power hungry. So honestly, really good setup for what it is and being able to push power and have high capacity. It weighs a lot. It does have a flash up here. It's got USBs. It's got USB-C port right here up to 60 watts. And I really like this USB-C port because not only is it an output, but it's also an input so you could charge off of this. But I did, I did actually break that port off recently. Kind of my fault a little bit. I think I bumped it when I had a cord plugged into it. But anyways, onto the issue of this thing. It also had enough power to run my diesel heater. So this thing was almost perfect. Ah, man, they almost got this thing perfect. It also charges very quickly. I was able to charge it in about three hours. It charges at like 400 watts. This thing was so close to being perfect, which sucks. But under the issue I had with this, and this was the serious problem, was reliability. And when I was living out of the truck and camping, one of the things that you need to have is reliable power, especially if you're going to be using it to power a fridge, because we were going camping for month long trips at the time, maybe three month trips, and I couldn't let my food go bad. So I was really relying on this thing. And I figured out the issue was with my Wii Boost. So I have a Wii Boost, which is a cell phone booster on my truck. Now the Wii Boost uses about 11 watts of DC power, very low voltage. It's just very low watts, low voltage, low power draw. So I found out when using the 12 volt port on this with my Wii Boost and it doing that low watt draw for extended periods of time, randomly it would confuse the computer or the board or however it's judging the capacity of this battery. And it would go from 80, 90, whatever the capacity was down to zero. Now this power wasn't being discharged through anything. It was the computer chip you know, inside of this box getting confused for some reason with that low watt pull and just thinking it was empty when it really wasn't because if I plugged into the charger, it would do some weird stuff and then kind of hop back up and charge up a little bit. It wouldn't take that whole charge. So I know it wasn't just dumping that power out of the box, but that was my main concern because I have a Wii Boost and the only way I can plug it in is through a power station that I have close to the port because it's mounted in the back of my truck and my only 12 volt plug I have in the whole truck is up front and the cord wouldn't reach. So I would use this in my back seat and plug my Wii Boost into it and unfortunately it would just randomly die to zero when I really needed that capacity for running my fridge, running my work laptops, you name it, editing my YouTube videos on my other laptop. So it, this was so close to being a 10 out of 10 power station for me that it just sucks. And I do actually still use this. I just, now I know what breaks it and I just don't use it that way. So as you can see, every one of these power stations I have in front of you, well, I guess I'm in front of you, but all these power stations right here, they all had a specific use case and a reason why I couldn't use them in a specific use case. But if you're just a normal family going out camping or an, a single guy or a gal or you, you name it, if you're just going out on a normal camping trip, you won't have these concerns. I have really oddly specific needs when I'm talking about this stuff because I built my truck to live out of. It's very niche down and I'm, I'm, I need specific things. And that kind of goes into my next power station I have here. And, the final one that I've had to deal with. Well, this was the, the newest one, but the company, the anchor reached out to me to do a review on it. But this was my final one. This is kind of like the, uh, oh man, this one's really heavy. This is kind of 
the final form of power stations. I'm proud of this one. Also, when you start getting into these big power stations, you can honestly just run anything off of them. Good for big families, good for anything but you just gotta watch the reliability. So onto the big boy here, this is a DIY power station that uh, my dad and I built. So I kinda came up with a plan, told him what I was looking for. He's a lot better with wiring than I am, so I just kinda gave him some money and told him to order the parts. I was busy living out of the truck and trying to do YouTube and everything, so I didn't really have time to deal with this. He went ahead and built it. The cool thing about this thing is it's completely customizable. So anything you wanna put in it, you can put in it. Right now we have a 690 watt hour, 50 amp hour battery in here. You can upgrade it to 100 amp hour, 200 amp hour. You can put 250s in there, wire them together. But this is really for someone who is a DIY guy who can tinker with things, or girl, who can tinker with things and kind of knows what they're doing. It's not super complicated to wire up, honestly. You can watch a bunch of videos on there. If you have a simple understanding of how wiring works, you could figure this out. It's not too crazy. but. Honestly, this is a sweet setup. We just got a rugged case. This is a DeWalt rugged case, but a bunch of different companies make these. You can go bigger, smaller, whatever your needs. I went with a bigger version so I can add things to it. So over here, we have two 12 volts wired directly to the battery. So there's no controller in there. So I know I won't have any issues with it running my diesel heater, which I've used this to run my diesel heater before. And my Wii Boost and my fridge all at the same time. So we have two going on there. And then up here we have a bunch of USB. We have two USB-C ports there and a normal USB port and another set of USB-Cs and USB up there. And right here is a solar controller because I use a solar panel mounted on the roof of my truck to charge this up so my fridge never runs out of power. As I mentioned, fridge in the back seat of the truck, game changer. If you don't have a fridge when you're camping, go ahead and get a fridge. But a lot of things going on here, solar controller, then this is actually the monitor for the battery. It'll tell you the capacity of the battery. Then I added another little thing. Now, as you can tell, before I show you this, do not judge because as you see here, everything's really premium looking. It looks pretty good. It's because my dad did it and my dad has a better attention to detail than I do when it comes to DIY things. So looking up to the front here, if it doesn't fall down, I then recently, about a week ago, because I wanted, since we're not living out of the truck anymore full time, I wanted to only have to take one power station with me instead of all these different ones for different use cases. So I put an inverter in there. This is a 500 watt inverter. So I'm able to run things up to 500 watts. When I'm going out camping, I'm not running anything more than 500 watts. My biggest laptop only goes to 270 watts. So I'm not gonna be able to pull any more than that with anything I have. So I put an inverter there and I just cut a hole into it. It's kind of a neat setup on the inside out. I'll show you, but you'll probably judge me. But the reason why I did it this way is because there's a lip here and I wanted to be able to turn it on and off with the switch. I'm sure there's a lot better ways I could have did that, but it works for what I'm doing. Okay, don't be judging. I tried my best. It was quick. Coming here to the back, or I guess the side. Oh, geez. This is the input for the solar. And then this is pretty neat right here. We have a battery charger on the inside of this box and I plug it into this port right here. The Tacoma has a 400 watt inverter inside of the truck that goes to this, the port in the back here. I did a mod in my truck that let me use the inverter on the inside of the truck. So in the event that I don't have sun hitting my solar panel, I can still charge this up with this port here and using that inverter in the inside of the truck. So if I'm done camping and this battery is at 20% or 0%, the sun's gone and I'm worried about my fridge running out of power, but I'm going on an eight hour trip, I can turn my inverter on and charge this while I'm driving. It does dual charge, so it'll take up to, um, I guess my panel on the roof is 100 watts and this takes 60 watts, so I can dual charge that at the same time as it's taking solar power. Oh geez. Very heavy, but the other thing about this is if anything breaks in this unit here, open up, give me a second. If anything breaks in this, I am able to just swap it out. So like any of these other units here, if something breaks in them, they're pretty much junk, especially if an inverter goes bad or the battery goes bad, you're not gonna be able to open that up and change the battery yourself, most likely. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think you're gonna be able to. 
in this box here. Oh, geez. I'm gonna try to show you guys. I'll, I'll bring the camera a little bit closer while I'm talking, but in this, anything that breaks, I can just pull out and change. Here's the battery, the battery goes bad. If I want a bigger battery, I can change it. If my inverter goes bad, I can change it. My controllers go bad, I can change it. My ports go bad, my charger goes bad. If anything goes bad, I can just change it. And it's actually pretty simple design. This is like the end all be all setup. If you're uh, looking for something like me and you need a very specific use case, a DIY solar box like this will be able to achieve anything you want it to do because you build it yourself and you can design it exactly for your needs. But not everybody is a DIY person. And this is oddly specific use case. So I wouldn't imagine everybody will go with this option. Oh man, I, I feel like I'm really rambling here, but I am trying to keep my thoughts in line. There's a lot of information going in my head about these power stations. I, I get excited when I talk about camping stuff. As you know, it's hard for me to stay focused. I'm hoping I'm explaining as best I can without rambling a lot of information in my head. If you're interested in kind of copying our DIY power station setup that my dad and I did, I'll link the video up here, maybe down below. I'll link it somewhere. You can watch it, kind of copy our setup. The parts list is in there. Pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me on Instagram or in my emails. I'm always trying to answer you guys. But please hit a like button, hit the subscribe button. It means a ton to me. We're on the road to 10,000. We are actually really close. We just hit 5,000. We're over 5,000 now. I really appreciate the support. Thank you guys. Let me know in the comments what power station you would pick. Do you have one currently? Let me know what you're using. I'm not brand specific. You know, as I mentioned, two of these companies have sent me and two of them were just because I needed one and I didn't really care about the brand. I just cared about budget. Thank you guys for watching. I hope I explained this the best I can. I'm probably all over the place, I guess. I tried. <laughs> I will see you guys in the next one. Do me a big favor. Check this video out right here. It is pretty good. And I'll see you in the next one.